All right, so I want to start real quick and uh, walk you through eCampus. My hope is that you've already done this, but just in case, um, eCampus, I want to make sure that you're familiar with everything that you have access to and what you're expected to have with you and where you can find the stuff that you need to turn in. So I'm just going to go through this. I strongly suggest, many of you have already been with me, so this is kind of like, okay, I get it, but you're not going to remember everything I say. Okay, so make yourself little notes on, hey, I need to print this, or hey, I need to get this, or whatever, so that you get that taken care of. The very first tab is syllabus and calendar. I'm just going to ask you to use common sense to tell me what you believe is underneath this tab. Yeah, it's the syllabus and the calendar. The syllabus at this point is about, I think, 16 or 18 pages. There's a whole lot of things that come up every semester, issues, and we have to modify the syllabus to cover ourselves legally. So you will see people wearing shirts that say it's in the syllabus. Because if you're like, well, I didn't know that I had to, ha- I had to turn everything in in blue or black ink. It's in the syllabus. I didn't know this. The response is, it's in the syllabus. I didn't know I could cheat or that I couldn't cheat. It's in the syllabus. Like all of it is in the syllabus, and that's the token response. I don't suggest you print this because it's so long, but I would save an electronic copy. That's just me, though. I'm always trying to cover my bases. Let me tell you the highlights of the syllabus. If, um, first of all, if you have any type of insecurities, learning disabilities, food insecurities, housing, transportation, anything like that, we have a building, the L building, and they will address every student issue. If you're a veteran, there. If you have a learning disability, there. Because remember, because you're considered a college student, for those of you who are in high school, Your parents aren't allowed to come up here and say, hey, my kid gets their test read to them. They can't say that. You have to speak to the coordinator, and the coordinator has to make arrangements for you. So at the beginning of the semester, if you need to have those accommodations because you've had them in high school, go down there, make yourself an appointment, and get that set up so that we have it ready to go by testing. So that's L building. You need access to the DART, anything like that, L building. Um, If you cheat, all of that is covered in the syllabus as well. We're going to sign an academic dishonesty statement. So if you've been here in 1406, it's the same thing, basically. I don't call you out in public because I don't think that that's a professional way to handle it. I'll send you an email, let you know, hey, here's the documentation I have of your academic dishonesty. And um, come have a conversation with me, and we're going to head over to administration. Because it's just a thing. You're this far. it's It's just not tolerated. We don't have a a research paper in here. We have like a research project on an endangered species. So we have a little bit more fun in here, I believe, at at least looking over it. I've never taught it this format here on this campus. But it looks like it's a lot more fun. There's less opportunities for academic dishonesty, but nonetheless, that's covered in the syllabus. Also in the syllabus, it's covered that you cannot wear open-toed shoes. Last semester, I let somebody wear open-toed shoes because we were doing a dry lab. Lo and behold, they got upset at me. Went and talked to the dean, and guess what they said? Well, she doesn't enforce the rules. I've worn open-toed shoes every day. And that was first false, but I did let her wear them one day, and I got in trouble for that. They were like, did you allow this? Yes, because I'm not a storyteller. And so they were like, "This, this is your warning. Okay, thank you for my warning. Also, you and I are in a lab every part of this class, whether we're in this lab or the lab down the hall. You can't have food or drink out. At all. I know this is the first day, so I'm not going to be like, oh, put that up, put that up. But it's around lunchtime. I'm hungry. Some of you have eaten. Some of you haven't. And if you walk in here with your water burger, you're going to make a lot of people upset. Okay? Especially if we can smell it. If I can smell it, for sure. So I'm asking you nicely, if you bring snacks or drinks, whatever, it just hangs out in your backpack. If you want to eat, if you really need to eat, go out in the hallway, eat, and come back in. Also in the syllabus, it covers cell phones. The overall ruling is you cannot have your cell phone out during lab. Let me rephrase that. While you're in a lab. Well, technically, you're in a lab the whole time. So we had a couple conversations, and if you were with me in 1406, you know that it's at, when we're in lecture, you can have your phone out, and it can be charging and all that. But in lab, when we're moving around, you cannot have phones out or charging, and the school is not responsible if you don't comply and something happens to your device. So we had someone trip over one of those like 10 foot chargers, you know what I'm talking about? The ones where you're like, the plug. anyways, in lab, and it, they tripped over someone else's phone, that phone shattered, and the student claimed that the school was responsible for that. That's not a thing, 
and the school's not going to replace, replace that phone, okay? So I'm just letting you know that's in the syllabus. It goes through um, it, what happens if you get caught vaping or all that. I, I, we, that doesn't ever, I've never had that experience, so we're just going to pretend like that's not going to happen in here. Like all that stuff is in the syllabus. There is a syllabus quiz that for you guys is due by Friday. <clears throat> the syllabus quiz can be taken over and over again. And this class is a points game, so I would take it until I could get the max number of points. But that's you. You do you and whatever makes you happy, okay? It's pulled from a question bank, so you're not going to get the same questions every single time, but that syllabus quiz is due for you on Friday, all right? So that's the syllabus. The institutional policies kind of back that up, but it's talking about uh, D, triple C, D as a district, and you can for sure click on that and look through that if you would like to. I don't suggest you print any of that unless you really just want it. Like if you're just, I like to have a lot of paper, then please do that, all right? The course calendar, I asked you to print out. The course calendar should have, you should have a um, lecture on one side, then it, we have word roots in here too. So just a new list. And then it has lab, and then it has the dates on the outside. I asked you nicely to print that course calendar so you kind of knew where we were um, each day and what to expect. I will, my goal is to continue to send emails like I do weekly, say, hey, this is what we're doing in that class, you know, next week so you have an idea. But if I don't send the email for whatever reason I forget, you have that calendar and you kind of know already what we're doing, okay? So you're not allowed to be like, well, I'm not doing that. You didn't send me an email. So the syllabus quiz I already told you is due by Friday. The chapter 20 pre-lecture quiz was due by today at 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you haven't done it, um, it's too late, and we're not going to open it up again. It was in that email and asked you to do it. It's considered bonus points on your first lecture exam. So if you did it, you get bonus points, and if you didn't, you don't get bonus points. Okay, um, and that's it. You can only take it one time. I can't tell you how many students said, well, I clicked on it, and I accidentally exited out. Can you reopen it? No, because immediately you're given the answer key. And they're like, well, I didn't look at it. Me neither. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not stupid because I'll probably say something stupid or do something stupid, but like, and so the answer is no, you can't retake it. But anyways, that's done um, and it's over with. Down here is the academic dishonesty and honor code statement. Uh, there's an electronic version there. You don't sign the electronic version. You're going to sign the in-person version. So I'm just going to ask that you take it you know, and pass it down, please and thank you. And you don't have to do it right this second, but by the time we take our break, that's what you'll hand in to me. I do want you to read it because I don't think you should sign anything without reading it. So make sure you understand that uh, academic dishonesty is a big deal uh, post-secondary for college, okay? So sign it. And your section number, let me write it over here. That's your section number, so when it asks for your course and section number, you have it in, uh, you have it to right there. <clears throat> Any questions on syllabus or course calendar tab, the very first tab on eCampus? So uh, the only thing I asked you to print here was the um, course calendar. What do you think is under the announcements tab? Yeah, it's announcements. That's it. Um, this is basically just telling you that you had that pre-semester quiz, uh, pre chapter 20 pre-semester quiz due this morning. Uh, also, once I start uploading these to um, YouTube, the videos, there will be a link there that you can click. But if you, like, subscribe to that, then, of course, you don't have to come back in. But it's just going to be each lecture that we have, and it'll just fall in line, okay? So you can listen to it while you drive or while you ride the bus, whatever it is that you do. If you try to listen to them all before the exam, whatever makes you happy. But that link will be there in announcements. In course documents, underneath course documents, there are your assigned textbook readings. They're exactly like they were for 1406. So you have four exams in the final, okay? And this course, 
your final exam can replace exams one, two, or three, but not four. So your final exam will work to replace one, two, or three. Um, if you miss an exam because you're out of town or whatever, we, there's only one other section of 1407. So, and it's offered during the same time. So if you're missing my class, you're probably going to miss the other class too. So it's going to be really difficult for you to make that up. So you'll get a zero on that exam, but whatever you make on the final can replace um, that previous one. If you go in and you fail one of your, previous, your first tests, one through three, I can use the final twice and I'll replace your lowest grade. So that's there. These are your assigned textbook readings. For 1407, we have a different textbook. This is just a paperback version. I don't care what version you have. I don't care if you don't have this book, which I probably shouldn't have said while I was recording. Anyway, you need to have a biology textbook. Biology has changed this much since like the 80s. Evolution is still evolution, like fossils are still fossils, okay? The only time that it becomes imperative that you have access to this textbook is for the assigned textbook readings. I suggest you either come up with a binder that has a divider for each test or you have a separate folder for each test. So you'll have four lecture exams, four lab exams, and then one final, which is lecture. So um, if, if having a three-ring binder is easier for you or having separate folders, but I would go ahead and, and print the assigned textbook readings for each exam. What these are are specific aspects that are found in the textbook that they want you to look at that you'll be tested on that I don't cover in lecture. Okay? So because you're going to review in advance, it says here, like, read about genetics on limb loss in snakes. In chapter one, there is a um, feature story on the limb loss in snakes. So you open to that if you want to use my textbook and take a picture of it, but you have that specific feature story. Does that make sense? So the assigned textbook readings, readings are specific to this textbook, but just so you know, the loss of legs and snakes is not just unique to this textbook. Like it's, once you start to learn it, you'll start, it, it'll just kind of pick up and we'll, we'll talk about that. We actually cover that today in today's lecture. Okay, it talks about questions at the end of the chapter. It's referencing those questions because if you study those questions, more than likely those questions are on the test. But I'm not allowed to cover those in lecture, so you're responsible for those. So the assigned textbook readings are under course documents, okay? I suggest you print them, and, and you print them, because whatever I tell you today, you're not going to remember next week. Each class is going to kind of be like, especially if you're taking more than one class, it's just going to be like, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, and then you're going to leave me, and you're going to be like, what did she say? Like, it'll just be like that. So I suggest you go ahead and make yourself a note and print the assigned textbook readings for each one. Questions on course documents. Okay, word roots. Same exact setup. Is that not in a rude way and not... Let me do this. If you've already taken 1406 here, and you know what I'm talking about, word roots, will you please and thank you raise your hand? So I have an idea, like everybody's kind of... Okay, so these are those quizzes that we take. Thank you for kindly for doing that. May you please print this word root list. It's different than the first one. If you've had me before, then you already know how I'm going to suggest you review. Print this. Um, here is someone's cards from last semester that left them. And they left them. And they left them, and I tried to give them back to them, but they never, whoever they were, they didn't take them. But they're good for example purposes. Make yourself a little flip book. And you put the root on one word side and the word on the other side if you didn't do well on these word roots to begin with. If you already did well and you have a method that works for you, then use that. But if you didn't, this is a really easy, quick way to study when you're sitting in the car or riding the bus or you're at practice or you're just bored in between commercials. You probably didn't even watch commercials anymore. You're probably Netflix or anything. I don't know what I was thinking right there. But I'm trying to think of ways that you would implement this. Your first word group will be 10 questions over this first list.
The second will be 10 questions, and remember it's kind of comprehensive. So each, um, each test only has 10 questions or each quiz, but it, the list becomes more and more comprehensive. And knowing these roots to the words helps you dissect the words on the test. So it's not just for fun, like, oh, let's give you one more quiz, although I think we over quiz completely. Uh, it does help you. I do believe the word roots do help you, okay? So uh, we do have our first word root quiz next week, so make sure you study the first column, Ecology 1, all right? And uh, then it should be pretty much weekly. On your course calendar, it tells you the dates for each of those word root quizzes. Right? Questions on word roots? Fantastic. Then we get, it says my grades and it says lectures. So my grades should be drug, drug down, but I, didn't, I can't design this class because somebody else designed it. Here are the lecture notes for each lecture exam. If you're going to go print, I would print all of this at one time. If you have somewhere to print, like I would print it on my lunch break at work or something like that. That's just me, though. You can print it. If you have access to a printer, then print them. If you don't have access to a printer, um, I would save them to my computer and bring my computer to class and just write the notes out beside them because these aren't notes that I designed, first of all, so they don't have my stories embedded in them. I will read a little bit on it, like to help kind of uh, track you and keep you going and how to interpret the words on it. But I teach a lot with stories, like trying to link it and trying to get you to understand the material in a different way. So like having the slides with you or on the computer, you can make the notes out beside that slide or say, hey, she didn't cover this slide at all. Because there are some slides in here that are just outline slides that I just, I'm like, nope, I'm going to cover this in just a second. Uh, because I I'm, haven't been able to design the slides for this course. Also up here, it talks about the taxonomy. You need to print this PowerPoint and know it because you have to be able to write in uh, binomial nomenclature and classify organisms on your own. It's part of your lab. So make sure you review um, the classification on taxonomy, and that's on you, okay? We talked about taxonomy in 1406, but that's there. So all here are the notes for each chapter, um, and they're here. So either print them and put them in a... Uh, your folder or your binder or have them saved on your desktop so that you can access them during uh, class and you can make notes out beside them. Now, right here is the college's exam review for exam one. This is not the one that I made. I did get access to your exams ahead of time, so I have already made you an exam review for test one, and if you've used my exam reviews before and you like that, then that's great. I'll send them to you in the email. So that's where you'll get those. Because this, again, this isn't my course, so uh, I don't have that autonomy yet in this class. I will send you my test reviews. Otherwise, this is a test review that is offered by the district, and it's pretty comprehensive. It says, no, pretty much everything and every chapter we cover, okay? Um, again, just like 1406, there, each of the tests are 100 questions. And the final exam will be 50. Your lab exams are anywhere from 35 to 50 questions. Questions here on the reviews. I would, I would have a copy of the exam review, whether I printed the notes or not, so I would know what was covered in each class. Like lecture, I would make notes to myself on what was covered in that lecture. So if you're printing things, all right? So lecture exam notes. The lectures are also not, um, like what's on lecture exam one will not carry over to two. So like if you do really poorly on lecture exam one and you're like, oh my gosh, now I'm set up for failure, two is not related to one. Like it goes on to a new topic, okay? So we actually do a lot of, it seems like we jump around a lot random, very randomly within this course because 1407 is so diverse, but they are not connected. So when exam one's over, it's over. All right. Any questions there? Endangered Species Project. This is the project that you have to do. You have to make a PowerPoint presentation, and it gives you the specifics of that project. 
here. Um, it tells you that you that you're going to have to submit it to turn it in to be reviewed for plagiarism and make sure that no one else has used that project before. So all of those instructions are here. It's very similar to the bioethics paper, except for there shouldn't be very long paragraphs on your PowerPoint slide. I don't know how many of you have made PowerPoints before, but paragraphs are just not acceptable. You don't put power, like huge paragraphs on a PowerPoint slide. Nobody reads that, and it's boring. So make yours cool. Like pick an endangered species. It cannot be an extinct species, but it tells you all that here. Okay, this project for you is due on April 17th. So you're probably like, oh, that's far away. You do you. All right, um, and you'll turn it in online just like you did with your bioethics paper. And we will bring this up later on. I just want you to see where it's at. Any questions on that in general, the Endangered Species Project? All right. The only thing that we have left as far as eCampus is the laboratory. And here I asked in the email that you print the lab schedule and due dates. And I'm going to go ahead and do the lab part of the orientation so that when we get over there, you're just looking at the specimens. Um, the lab due dates and quiz schedule is here. It tells you what we, what we will be doing during each lab time that we meet and how many points are going to be associated with that. So like today, you're going to work on assignment one, which is the skulls, and there's a whole bunch of skulls out over there laid out like for you to view. Then when we come together on Monday, you're going to have a pre and a post quiz over chapter one, which is going to be like food webs, adaptations, and skulls, which we've covered in lab, and that's worth three points. So it tells you how many points are associated with those assignments. I asked you nicely to print this as well so that you had this information. Um, Whenever you, in 1407, unlike 1406, we submit like a lab assignment. So you'll have like an assignment like to do. Like you'll have to do like a, pick a biome and you need to create a food web that has this many specific um, like producers, primary consumers, secondary, tertiary, and all. Like there's actually like many projects that you do because the labs just aren't what they were in 1406, okay? So there's like little projects, and it has you kind of analyze skulls, like how can you tell the difference between, you know, over time, how has the skull changed, and what type of teeth will you find in certain skulls, and so you're, you're having to reflect and critically think about that. So um, these are all handouts. HO stands for handouts, which means that you'll find them on eCampus, okay? I'm still under laboratory, or any questions there? Sorry. Still under your laboratory are the lab handouts. Print these handouts, okay? These are the ones for so far uh, that you will need. So I ask that you brought, I'm pretty sure I asked for all of these today. I'm pretty positive I did. But if I didn't, you'll for sure need the skull one. Um, we can start biomes and adaptations. Taxonomy is the one that you'll kind of do on your own. You will also need a lab book for this class. I, don't, I didn't get my own copy of the lab book but it's like a big, it's not like the 1406 one, it's like a big book, and you have to tear the pages out of it. So you'll do the assignment, and you'll tear it out, and you'll submit it, okay? So make sure that you get that as well. How many lab exam answer documents do you need? Four, yeah. Please make sure you have four copies of the lab exam answer document, all right, so that you're ready to go for your lab exams. And no... Um, Last minute, oh crap, can I write on a separate sheet of paper? Last semester I did that for two students that were athletes and I got in trouble for making an exception because they thought I was partial to athletes, which I, first of all, had no idea that they were athletes. I, I, I don't think that it would be nice, right to stereotype them. But then they said that those documents were unscorable because it was not on the lab exam answer document. Not trying to be rude, they had failed anyway. But I was like, gosh, that really sucks because I was like, sure, you know, you missed, you did it, whatever, you're running late. Don't, and also there's usually a, a silly little angel who like prints 20 of them and like waits for that distressed test taker to enter so that they can save the day and they're so sweet. But don't depend on there being an angel because as soon as I say that there may be an angel, you'll be depending on an angel <laughs> and then 
Nobody will be here, and you'll be like, I thought you said somebody would have an extra copy. And I'll be like, your class is angel free. I don't know. Okay, so make sure you have four copies of that for yourself, and you're responsible for printing those. Still under laboratories, the lab practical review sheets. These are reviews for each of our lab exams. <clears throat> All right. Um, I didn't make these because I haven't had access to your lab exams. So these are made. There's only been one professor who has taught this class on this campus until this semester. It's me. And professors are really some. Old school, like, I'm not going to give you my stuff, and I'm not going to tell you this, and that's cool. Well, we can, we can do that. But that's kind of where we're at right now. So it's you're using my course because you wanted to teach your high school students, which is exactly the truth, because I wanted my crew from last semester. And um, so it's like they feel like they're doing me a favor. All right. I didn't make these, and I haven't seen your lab exams. But as soon as I do, I'll let you know if they align. Still review. Still review. I have been told by the lab tech who sets up your lab, just tell your students to memorize, memorize, memorize. Memorize, memorize, memorize. Like memorize the species, memor like memorize. Like 1407 is memorize. And I was like, okay. So, and she came by and said that yesterday. So memorize, memorize, memorize. And when I see, I'll let you know. And once I have the opportunity, I'll make my own exam or lab exam reviews and send them but those are your lab exam reviews that you have access to right now. WordRoot is that same uh, WordRoot list that was where it said WordRoots. And then here for lab safety, I'm gonna walk us through the lab safety in the other lab, but in this lab, generally speaking, it's the exact same setup for glass. Dis you won't do labs in here, okay? Because everything is set up over there. But you know that glass doesn't get thrown in the regular trash can. I'm just going to say that while I'm thinking about it. It gets thrown in the glass disposal so that it, it doesn't cut through the bag. And when people ch take the trash bag out, like they don't get cut. We don't want blood at all. If you are bleeding because of a paper cut, we have Band-Aids over there. But if you're bleeding, I'm not trying to be rude, but nobody's going to stand up and say, hey, I'm just going to let you all know you're in my lab group. I have herpes. So if I start bleeding, don't touch my blood. Nobody's going to say that. And not to be disrespectful, but I would just act like everybody did have something. You know, like, so if you're bleeding, either put a Band-Aid on it, or could you please and thank you roll out and we'll catch you the next class. Okay? Because these stations and stuff don't get sterilized between classes. They get at night. So there shouldn't be any glass or anything breaking, or hopefully nobody gets cut, but if it's a paper cut in this class, that's fine. If there's a fire in here, don't stay in here leave, okay? Don't, like, wait for me outside. No. If you drove, get in your vehicle and leave. And if you didn't, then go to another building and hang out or watch it burn. I don't know. But don't stay in here, okay? If it's safe for you to get your stuff, get your stuff, but roll out. Don't, and don't think that I'm going to be like, as soon as this fire's over, we're going to finish Chapter 51. Because I'm not. Because I'm probably already gone. I probably beat you. Okay? <laughs> i probably beat you, all right, because I like to miss class just as much as you do, except for the fact that I have to make sure I lecture to cover everything else. So we will cover lab safety and kind of go around that classroom over there when we get there in 243, okay? At this time, you should have your academic dishonesty statements uh, because I'm going to finish the introduction part. Any questions on the orientation for lecture or anything like that? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, it is my understanding at this point I have not been made aware of any composition books. Yes, sir. Are you still doing the ABA? <clears throat> I'm not going to comment on that at this time. <laughs> Additional questions? <laughs> 